to all you beautiful souls and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you here for the first time, my name's Terry. I'm an intuitive tarot reader. Today's reading is going to be a yes or no answer to whatever question you would like to ask. Please remember, this is a general reading. Lots of people, lots of questions, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you're looking for a more personalized reading, I do offer private readings, thereby gift exchange, meaning I will do your reading for you as a gift. I ask that you respond with a monetary gift. Whatever amount you feel is appropriate will be perfect. That way my readings are affordable to everybody. If you'd like more information or to get on my schedule, please email me at Terry's Inspired Tarot at gmail.com and I'll get you whatever information you need or onto my schedule if that's what you desire. Now, looking at today's general yes or no reading, we are going to have reading number one with the appetite, reading number two with the amazonite, reading number three with the lapetalite reading number four with the epidote, and reading number five with the aventurine. Please select your reading intuitively. Your intuition is not gonna lead you wrong. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into these readings now, so I will see you guys there. Hello to all you beautiful souls who selected reading number one with the appetite. Your first message of the reading is to get out of your comfort zone. So some things are going to need to happen that take you out of your comfort zone. So just kind of get ready. Now let's take a look at your yes or no. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors, please answer clearly through the transparent tarot. Yes or no to the questions of group number one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna shuffle until the deck feels ready. Then I'll cut and we'll deal straight from the top, taking three to six cards. That will get us our yes or no answer. Okay, let's see here. All right, that's good. And we'll get this to hold the cards. Okay, let's see here. We start with the wheel. That is beautiful healing energy. In this deck, it's a medicine wheel, so there is some healing aspects to the wheel, but it also talks about luck and fate guiding you, luck being with you along your path. Next, we see the Ace of Pentacles. The Ace of Pentacles talks about a beginning that has a positive effect on your material realm. So this could be a new job, this could be a promotion, something is starting that has a good impact on your financial material realm. Next, we see the Ten of Cups. That is very happy home life energy, peaceful home life, being at peace in your home situation. It can also sometimes represent moving. And then topping everything off, we have the Fool. The Fool talks about a new beginning. It is the most significant new beginning in the tarot with the Fool. That's like the biggest beginning. And it's kind of a jump in and go for it type beginning. So make sure that you're not, you know, completely throwing your cares to the side, but it may be time to go for it. Now, this looks like a pretty solid yes to whatever you ask tarot. Let's take a look at your situations. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors, please show us the situations of group number one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's see here. Two of Cups, some of you stepping into those soulmate relationships. Six of Cups, that is encouraging you to look back, see how far you've come, see your growth, really appreciate where you've been and where you are now. Four of Cups, so the Four of Cups says that you may be missing something that's right in front of you. Or you could be seeing things the way you wish they were versus the way they actually are. We'll get Oracle and kind of see what the message behind the Four of Cups is here. 
and then death. Something is ending. Now that's not surprising because you get this huge beginning going on in your transparent tarot. And the death card means something ends to start something new. So we'll get Oracle on that as well, but don't be afraid of endings. Endings are not always bad. They bring in new energy. Something has to end to make room for the new beginning. Now let's get Oracle for everything. So angels for group number one, please. Thank you. Thank you. Archangel Chamuel. All right. Archangel Chamuel is the archangel that deals with love. So for those of you stepping into these romantic soulmate connections, and I guess soulmates don't have to be romantic. This could be a friend that's a soulmate, but for many of you, it is romantic and love kind of um, guides all of it, whether it's romantic or not. Archangel Chamuel is here offering her guidance and assistance with regards to love. So call out to her if you desire. Now, let's take a look at the Four of Cups with Moonology. What is there for this Four of Cups? Prosperity lies ahead. Okay. So, and you know, that with the Ace of Pentacles being in there, that's not surprising. You may be seeing things the way you wish they were, or you may be missing an opportunity that's right there in front of you. So with this get out of your comfort zone, just assess what's going on. There may be some action you need to take to step into this Ace of Pentacles beginning. And it may be a little bit out of your comfort zone, but it's going to bring in prosperity for you. Now the death card, what is there to add to the death card? take time to breathe out. Okay. So do not fear this ending. There is nothing to fear in the ending when whatever ending happens, happens. So, you know, whatever comes to an end comes to an end. Take some time, take a deep breath, realize that the beginning is coming in and that's where your energy needs to go. Your energy does not need to go to whatever ends. The ending means it's over. So step into the new beginning. Don't give the ending any more of your energy. All right, now let's see the Six of Cups with Queen of the Moon. What is there for the Six of Cups? Patience, okay. So the Six of Cups is about looking back, seeing how far you've come and appreciating it. You're being asked by your guides to recognize the growth you've had so far and be patient with yourself as you move forward. Nobody's perfect. Nobody gets it right the first time every time. That's not a real thing. So be patient with yourself. Appreciate how far you've come. Don't be so hard on yourself. Patience is what's necessary as you move forward. Now let's see the spell casting oracle. So what is there for this two of cups for group number one? Thank you, thank you. Good luck. Okay, so this soulmate connection is coming in and luck is guiding it. You had the wheel in there too. So luck really is guiding your path, but especially with regards to the soulmate connection, you don't have to worry. Luck is bringing it towards you and it is going to, you know, make you feel like you have stepped into good luck. Now, transparent tarot. Justice. All right. So the answer to your question was a pretty solid yes. And it focuses on a new beginning. Justice talks about balance and fairness. So fairness having some bearing on your question, the answer is yes, and it has something to do with fairness. The answer is yes, but balance is going to be required. So take that as it resonates for you, but balance has some bearing on your answer being yes. All right, that is all I have for reading number one. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you enjoyed your reading, please click that subscribe button. Until next time, love, light, courage, and strength to each and every one of you. Bye-bye. Hello to all you beautiful souls who selected reading number two with the Amazonite. Your first message of the reading is to loosen your grip. So whatever it is you're hanging on to so tightly, it's time to give it a little bit of breathing room. Now let's take a look at your yes or no. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors, please answer clearly through the transparent tarot. Yes or no to the questions of group number two. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna shuffle until the deck feels ready. Then I'll cut and we'll deal straight from the top, taking three to six cards 
that will get us our yes or no answer. Okay, let's see here. That's good. We'll get this to hold the cards. Okay, so we start with the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles can talk about a person. If it does, this person is very, very generous. It talks about sharing what you have with others. Next, we see the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands can talk about marriage, talks about commitments, and moreover, desiring to make commitments. Next, we see the Devil. The Devil talks about stuck energy, um, getting close to things that are not good for us, and addiction. You know, um, it can talk about love triangles. There's a lot of energy wrapped up in the Devil. Next, we see the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords says it's time to relax. It's time to rest. It is time to take care of you. You need to start paying attention to your body and your energy and make sure you're getting the rest that you need. That is followed by the Ace of Cups, which talks about a new beginning that is emotionally fulfilling, something emotionally fulfilling happening here. And then topping everything off, we have the Ten of Swords, which is an ending. An over and done ending that can even kind of leave you feeling stabbed in the back a little bit. All right, so there's a lot of energy here in the transparent tarot for group number two. With the devil and the ten of swords and the four of swords, I kind of feel like the answer is probably no. Your guides are bringing in a new beginning energy with the ace of cups and the four of wands. So there is a new beginning here, but the answer to the question is probably no. The devil and the ten of swords are pretty strong. No cards. Um, now, that being said, I feel like many of you may be happy about this because the ace of cups is in there. Let's take a look at your situations. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors, please show us the situations of group number two. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Seven of Swords, that can talk about hanging on to things too tightly, goes kind of with that loosen your grip. It also says someone may not be being completely honest with you. Ten of Cups, that's a happy home life. So having that stable, happy home life, and some of you may even be moving to new homes right now. Eight of Coins, that talks about you putting in your work and being rewarded for that work. So doing the work, being rewarded for the work, and then temperance. Temperance talks about balance, balancing passion and emotion, having that healthy balance or at least striving for it. Now let's take a look at Oracle for everything and kind of expand on the messages. Angels for group number two, whatever's in their best benefit. Kindness, okay, so the angels are asking you to focus on kindness letting your kindness shine for others and accepting kindness from the universe. Now let's get Moonology on this Seven of Swords. So the Seven of Swords, please. Believe in the impossible. Okay, so I, I kind of feel like it's probably not so much about someone being dishonest and more about whatever it is you're hanging on to so tightly. If you hang on to something so tightly, you can kind of, you know, squeeze the energy out of it. Let go. Believe it's going to come back to you. If it's meant for you, it's going to come back to you. Whatever it is, a relationship, you know, something material, you know, what a, a hope, a dream, whatever it is, release it into the universe. Don't squeeze it so tight. Believe in the impossible. Believe whatever you desire is going to happen. And that energy is going to come back to you as long as it's meant for you. Now, let's also see the eight of coins here. You are good enough. All right, you're putting in your work. You are plenty good enough at what you do. Do not doubt yourself. Continue putting in the work and you will continue being rewarded for it. Now, let's see temperance with Queen of the Moon. What is there to add to Queen of the Moon here? The masculine. Okay. So the masculine talks about action energy. I think you guys either are taking action or need to take action with regards to this balance. This is balancing passion and emotion specifically, but it can also talk about just general balance in your life, having that healthy balance, you know, the work play balance, all of that balance is very important and you may need to take some action in your specific life to bring that balance in. 
Now let's take a look at spell casting for the Ten of Cups. That just keeps trying to crawl off of there. Okay. Ten of Cups, please. Thank you, thank you. Fertility. Okay. So you guys are in a happy home, peaceful home life, or the situation is very fertile for this peace at home. This may also talk about moving. If you're Even if you're asking about moving, the answer to your question is most likely no. With the Ten of Swords and the Devil there, it really feels like the answer is no because those are really strong no's. And the other positive cards, like the Ace of Cups is very positive, but see how even when you like lay them out, it's, it's surrounded surrounded by the devil card, um, which is about stuck energy. So it's almost like this new beginning is coming in, but it's stuck in some way. So the situation is fertile for this peace in your situations, but you have to take action. You may have to deal with a blockage to step into it. Now for the transparent tarot, which was most likely no, home. Okay, you guys have home a couple of times in your reading. I don't know if a lot of you are asking about moving or just your home energy. I, I feel like you're on the cusp of moving into something better if you're looking at moving or having that peaceful home life. I'm not sure what the question was. The answer no may be very positive here and that's why we're getting that Ace of Cups in the Transparent Tarot. But home has some bearing on your question or your answer being no or most likely no in some way or another. All right, that is all I have for reading number two. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you enjoyed your reading, please make sure you click that subscribe button. Until next time, love, light, courage, and strength to each and every one of you. Bye-bye. Hello to all you beautiful souls who selected reading number three with the lapetto light. Your first message of the reading is to recall your dreams. So pay attention to what you're dreaming at night and also pay attention to those hopes and dreams. Make sure you're not losing sight of them. Now let's take a look at your yes or no. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors. Please answer clearly through the transparent tarot. Yes or no to the questions of group number three. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna shuffle until the deck feels ready. Then I'll cut and we'll deal straight from the top, taking three to six cards. That will get us our yes or no answer. Okay, let's see here. All right, that's good. We'll get this to hold the cards. Okay. So we start with the hermit. The hermit can talk about alone time, but it says you have the opportunity to spend that time doing the inner work that propels you forward down your path. So kind of reaching the, the peak of the mountaintop. Next, we see the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is about falling in love. Uh, emotion meets passion, they kind of whirlwind. It doesn't have to be falling in love with a person, could be falling in love with a job, could be falling in love with a hobby, but it's falling in love in some way. Next, we see the Phoenix. The Phoenix is judgment. It talks about a second chance. Um, a second chance at something you desire, getting a second chance to step into a situation that calls to you, that draws you. Next, we see the Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles talks about being appreciated for your work. So people recognizing your work, people recognizing what you're doing. This normally is material work because it's a pentacle, but it could also be that inner work that you were doing in your alone time in the Hermit. Next, we see the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups says you have lots of options available to you right now. You need to take your time and choose what actually resonates with you. Some of those options are gonna be really, really good. Some of them not so good. So make sure you take your time and choose what resonates with you. And then topping everything off is the fool, a new beginning, a significant new beginning, maybe something that you're jumping into without looking just a little bit, but, uh, but it is a real significant new beginning here. 
All right, so looking at this as a yes or no, this definitely leans towards yes, so most likely yes to whatever you ask Tarot. Now, let's take a look at your situations. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors, please show us the situations of group number three. Thank you, thank you. Ten of Cups, that happy home life. All right, good energy there. Two of Swords, something feels stuck. Some kind of energy is stuck. Some kind of stalemate where you don't see your way out. We'll get Oracle and see what can be done to assist there. Three of Cups, that is celebrating, having things to celebrate, could represent birthday celebrations. Um, also has kind of a side note about pregnancy and birth. So if that's what you're looking for, please seek whatever medical advice, assistance you desire, you deem appropriate. I'm just telling you that it's a possibility with that card being there. And then the Ten of Wands, things feeling overwhelming. Okay, so overwhelming energy. It's kind of back and forth in your situations. There's really good energy, and then there's some difficult energy you're dealing with, which is pretty normal for life. We have ups and downs that we go through every day. Now, let's take a look at Oracle to get advice on the difficulties and guidance regarding the happy things. Angels, for group number three, please. Thank you, thank you. Friendship. Okay, this friendship card tells you don't ignore your friends. So make sure you're making time for those friendship connections. It also says you need to show yourself that same kind of compassion and love that you show to others in your friendship circle. Now, let's see Moonology on the Two of Swords, Angels, Spirit Guides, Ancestors. What do they do to step out of the stuck energy in the Two of Swords? Luck is on your side. All right, so I think that the answer of how to step out of it is probably different for each and every one of you, but your guides want you to know that luck is on your side. Luck is helping you move forward, so wherever you feel stuck, know that things are getting better because luck is guiding you forward. Now, let's also see Moonology on this Ten of Wands. What is there for the Ten of Wands? A new romantic cycle begins. Okay, this doesn't have to be with a new person. It can be though. There's like the second chance in there and there's falling in love. So, I mean, it, it may be that you're falling in love with someone you've been with before, um, but it's a new romantic cycle. So whether it's new person or someone coming back into your realm, starting things up again, it's a new romantic cycle. That can be overwhelming. The, the falling in love thing is overwhelming because the emotions are so strong. So just take time and breathe, you know? This is your guides letting you know, hey, it's gonna be kind of overwhelming because this new cycle is starting, but there's lots of good energy too. So breathe your way through it and know that it won't last forever. And it can be, you can be overwhelmed in a good way. Now let's see the Three of Cups with Queen of the Moon. What is there to add to these celebrations in the Three of Cups, please? Growth. All right. So one of the things you're, you should be celebrating is your growth. You are growing, you're achieving, you're moving forward, and that is worthy of your celebration. Now let's see the Ten of Cups out of Spellcasting Oracle. What is there for the Ten of Cups? Justice. All right. So this happy home life is balanced or at least it needs balance needs to be a focus balance will bring in that peaceful home energy make sure that you are balancing your work and play life that you are not working so hard that you're missing all of this peaceful home energy that you have going on right now with your family and it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to have you know a big family or kids or anything this could be your soul family this could be your roommates that you live with like however it works out for you this is peace in your home and you don't want to miss that so make sure that you do have a nice healthy work-life balance that is fair and very important now, let's see the transparent tarot, which was most likely, yes, lighten your load. All right, so the answer is most likely yes to whatever you ask tarot. I think that you may need to lighten your load a little bit to draw in whatever energy there is that, um, that you're trying to draw in with whatever it is you're asking about. So the answer, um, a, a positive answer, it looks like yes. Um, it leans very heavily towards yes, 
So most likely, yes. And lightening your load plays some part in it. All right. That is all I have for reading number three. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you enjoyed your reading, please make sure you click that subscribe button. Until next time, love, light, courage, and strength to each and every one of you. Bye-bye. Hello to all you beautiful souls who selected reading number four with the epidote. Your first message of the reading is to go deeper. So dig deeper into whatever situation you're dealing with, whatever challenge you're facing. You've got this, but you're going to need to go a little deeper. Now let's take a look at your yes or no. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors. Please answer clearly through the transparent tarot, yes or no, to the questions of group number four. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm going to shuffle until the deck feels ready. Then I'll cut and we'll deal straight from the top, taking three to six cards. That will get us our yes or no answer. Okay, let's see here. There we go. All right, we'll get this to hold the cards. Okay, we start with the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups talks about the soulmate connection. Um, the soulmates don't have to be romantic, but they oftentimes are. Many of you meeting soulmates are asking questions about soulmates. Next, we see Temperance. Temperance talks about balancing passion and emotion. So having a nice, healthy balance of both. Next, we see the Five of Wands. The Five of Wands can represent a little bit of fighting. So maybe some fighting going on. But then there's also the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups talks about looking back, seeing how far you've come, seeing your growth, and appreciating that growth. Five of Cups is next. The Five of Cups says that you might be getting a little bit stuck in looking at what you feel like you've lost versus looking at what you have to be grateful for. So make sure that you shift that focus into things that you have to be grateful for over focusing on what you feel should have been yours that isn't. And topping everything off, we have the Hierophant. The Hierophant talks about foundational energy, laying those roots. That's why it's represented by this giant tree. Uh, it can represent marriage. It can represent going back to school. It can represent finding a belief system that resonates with your soul. So really foundational energy there. Okay, so looking at this as a yes or no, I know we have the double fives in there, which says you guys are really dealing with some stuff, but temperance and the hierophant and the six of cups and the two of cups kind of overshadow it. So the answer to your question is most likely yes. Now let's take a look at your situations. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors, please show us the situations of group number four. Thank you, thank you. Four of Wands, that can also represent marriage. Um, it represents doors opening, commitments, making, it has the desire for commitment. The Hierophant talks more about like the paperwork side of getting married, the structural side of things. The Four of Wands talks about the wanting to get married, the wanting to commit to something. King of Coins. The King of Coins can represent you or someone in your life, or it can say significant abundance is heading in for you. The King of Coins, if it represents a person, this is someone who wants to be the person that people come to for assistance, wants to be the one that can take care of the issue. The Priestess. The Priestess says your intuition is on point. So whatever your intuition is telling you, you need to listen to that. You are getting those intuitive messages at a high level right now. And then the Knight of Wands. That's about falling in love. That's the whirlwind of passion meets emotion. And they just kind of swirl around and make everybody a little crazy for a minute. So many of you falling in love with soulmates. There's some fighting. There's some issues. But there's definitely a possibility of commitment here. All right, let's get Oracle for everything. We'll start with Angel Oracle. Angels, for group number four, please. Thank you, thank you. 
generosity. All right, the angels pouring their generosity out on you. You being asked to reciprocate and pour your generosity out on others. Now, let's use Moonology and see this priestess here. What is there to add to the priestess? Believe in the impossible. So when you're getting those intuitive messages, those gut instincts that are just, there's just no explanation for them, but you just know, that is your guides. That is your ability to connect with spirit energy. And as some of you may be new to this kind of intuitive energy coming in, you need to believe in the impossible. You need to believe in your gut instincts. You need to believe in your intuition. It is guiding you. It is leading you, but you have to believe in it. Now let's take a look at Queen of the Moon and we're going to see this in King of Coins. What is there for the King of Coins here? Beauty. Okay, so this is a very beautiful energy. I feel like this may represent your significant other for some of you um, who are dealing with the soulmate and the fighting and whatnot. Um, this is a real beautiful energy. This could be your energy too, but it's a very beautiful energy. So something to be appreciated for sure. Now the four of wands, discernment. All right, so again, you have the idea of commitment. This discernment card, see how it's glowing in her gut and her eyes are covered by clouds? It's saying follow those gut instincts. If your gut tells you that commitment is where your heart lies, then that's the direction you need to go. If your gut tells you to walk away from commitment, to close the door, don't leave it open like that, that's where you need to go. You need to trust those instincts. It's very important. Now, let's see the spell casting oracle, and we're going to start with the Knight of Wands. So, what is there for the Knight of Wands out of the spell casting oracle? Spirit guide. Okay, so this whole falling in love, and it doesn't have to be a person. Like, there's clearly lots of um, romantic relationships in group number four, so that's kind of the focus of it. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It can be falling in love with a hobby. It can be falling in love with a, a material something. It's falling in love with something, and your guides are guiding you through it. So I know it can be overwhelming when you have all that passion and all that emotion and all that going on. Your guides are there. Again, I'm going to reiterate, trust those instincts. Now, the transparent tarot, which was most likely yes, you get reconciliation. So the answer is most likely yes. It's asking for reconciliation or it is leading towards reconciliation. Um, there is some fighting in here. So many of you may be fighting with a soulmate. Reconciliation is part of the path. Take it however it resonates for you, but the answer is most likely yes, and it probably leads towards reconciliation. All right, that is all I have for reading number four. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you enjoyed your reading, please make sure you click that subscribe button. Until next time, love, light, courage, and strength to each and every one of you. Bye-bye. Hello to all you beautiful souls who selected reading number five with the Aventurine. Your first message of the reading is to create your own luck. So it's time for you to use your intention, for you to use your expectations, and create that luck you've been looking for. Now let's take a look at your yes or no answer. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors. Please answer clearly through the transparent tarot, yes or no, to the questions of group number five. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm going to shuffle until the deck feels ready. Then I'll cut and we'll deal straight from the top, taking three to six cards. That will get us our yes or no answer. Okay, here we go. We'll get this to hold the cards. All right. So we start with the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups talks about a beginning that's emotionally fulfilling. That's followed by the Tower. Lots and lots of change coming in. So significant changes, thing be, things being broken down to be rebuilt new. Next, we see the Hierophant. The Hierophant talks about foundational change. It talks about um, 
making those foundational changes like getting married or going back to school to change careers or finding a belief set that resonates with you. So making those foundational changes, laying those roots and those roots really taking off. Next, we see the 10 of wands. The 10 of wands talks about feeling overwhelmed, overwhelming situations, dealing with things that overwhelm you. Next, we see the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups talks about a proposal. Normally, this is a romantic proposal, taking things to the next level, whatever level you're at, moving to the next one. It can be work-related in that maybe a proposal to, you know, take on a team and be a leader or something like that. But uh, normally, this is a romantic proposal. And then topping everything off, we have the Emperor. The Emperor reminds you that you're in charge. You are the ones that one that is making the decisions about the direction your life is going to go. It's up to you to choose what's right for you. All right. So this is kind of on, this is kind of on the fence. It's definitely not a strong answer by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, you have the Hierophant, which is kind of neutral, the Tower, which kind of holds a negative impact, the Emperor, which is neutral, the Ace of Cups, which is very positive, the Knight of Cups, which is very positive, and the Ten of Wands, which is kind of negative. So I am going to go with maybe leaning towards yes, but you have to choose it, okay? So whatever you ask, the answer is maybe leaning towards yes, okay? So not a strong yes, and it definitely is something you have to choose. Your decision is a factor here. Now let's take a look at your situations. Angels, spirit guides, ancestors. For group number five, please show us their situations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ten of Wands. There's that overwhelming energy again. So that's our second time seeing that. You guys are dealing with things being really overwhelming in your world right now. I'm going to get Oracle and see how you deal with it. Death. Something is ending. But with every ending comes a new beginning. So something's ending to bring in new energy. Now let's see. Knight of Coins. The Knight of Coins talks about opportunity that's out in front of you. There's a little tiny nap. <laughs> okay. Um, the Knight of Coins talks about opportunity that's out in front of you. It is very slow moving though. So you do have opportunities you're going to step into, but they are slow moving. You have to be patient. And then the Five of Swords, that talks about you worrying. So you guys are kind of putting in the energy into worry. Now let's take a look at Oracle. We're going to start with Angel Oracle. Angels. For group number five, please, whatever they need to hear right now. Thank you, thank you. Archangel Jophiel. Archangel Jophiel is the Archangel of Joy. Look at all the yellow in that card, like the butterflies. Like, she's all about joy. She's here in your reading to remind you that joy is part of the reason you're here. And if you need help finding your joy, she's more than happy to help you. You can call out to her for assistance. Now, let's see the Five of Swords with regards to the worry. How do they step out of this worry? Show the world the real you. Okay, some of you may be worried that people are going to not like you, um, worried about how the people think about you, that sort of thing. That may be part of this worry. You're told to show the world the real you. Don't worry about what people are going to think about the authentic you. You being the authentic you is going to draw the energy of the people that are meant for you. And that's all that really matters. Now, let's take a look at the Ten of Wands. What is there in the Ten of Wands here? This overwhelming energy. Hold your vision. Okay, so the guides recognize that you're overwhelmed, but they're asking you to hang in there. I mean, that is, that's basically not advice on how to come out of the Ten of Wands. It just says, hey, you can do this. Don't give up. Keep pushing forward. It's not always going to be hard. Now, let's take a look at Queen of the Moon. We're going to look at this Knight of Coins. What is there in the Knight of Coins for Queen of the Moon? 
the path. Okay, so your path does lead you to opportunity. You just have to be patient. Like I said, the Knight of Coins, very slow moving, but it talks about possibilities and opportunities. It's part of your path. So you just have to be patient and kind of let things progress until you get there. Now let's see death out of the spell casting oracle. So what is there for death here, please? Fertility. Okay, that's what I was talking about. Do not be afraid of the ending because the ending starts a new beginning. So something's ending, bringing in new energy, and the situation is fertile for the growth of this new beginning. Now, transparent tarot. What is there for transparent tarot? Ooh, passion. Okay, so the answer was maybe leaning towards yes and passion plays a factor in it. So if it's part of your passions and you choose it, then the answer is most likely yes. But otherwise, it's a pretty solid maybe. Probably has some um, free will factor still playing a factor. All right, that's all I have for reading number five. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. If you enjoyed your reading, please make sure you click that subscribe button. Until next time, love, light, courage, and strength to each and every one of you. Bye-bye.